This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Tonight, taking the message from the city to the suburbs, protesters against police brutality gathered in several towns outside of Indianapolis to speak, to march, and to make sure they were heard in what are typically quiet neighborhoods. RTV6's Mark Mullins is live with a look at the difference between downtown tonight and the suburbs today. Nicole, downtown, it is quiet, no curfew, no protests, but there was still a lot of work to do today. Protesters took their message from the streets of downtown Indy to places like Fishers, Noblesville, and Brownsburg. In Fishers, a young woman had no idea how many would show up. I started a campaign called Change the Narrative, How Do You See Me? But Raina Costa organized a peaceful rally in March to protest police brutality and to demand justice for black men and women who have died in police custody or were victims of hate crimes by civilians. Rain feels the message needs to be just as loud in the quieter communities surrounding the Circle City. So if we come here and show them here as well, not just downtown Indy, it just helps spread the word even more. We wanted our kids to come out and see some of what's going on and kind of let them experience it firsthand because it's nothing like seeing it in person and understanding what's going on. Michelle Weber brought her young daughter from Carmel to the rally in March. Mom is already trying to teach empathy. We've talked a lot about um, just how we would feel if that were happening to us and just putting it on you know, ourselves. It's best expressed by kids. They are innocent and they know that it's wrong. They were among roughly 40 people who stood quiet during a moment of silence to honor George Floyd, the man who died last month in police custody in Minneapolis. The protesters then marched with police along 116th Street in Fishers. Rain's goal was to spark dialogue between the officers and the protesters. Sunder Nix had questions for those in uniform. What kind of questions did you ask or want to know? I just people to ask them, like, uh, what I saw in Minnesota, it was, it was, it was heartbreaking to me. And uh, I asked them, how would they handle that situation if we're handling only, only a force? He said, yeah, they have bylaws and prologues, uh, they'll probably stop that situation right there. The chief of the Fishers Police Department spent a majority of the march answering questions and learning lessons. Just communicate. I really think we just need to keep communicating, keep the dialogue moving. We're going through policy reviews and looks just like every other agency. I want the community to be involved in that. So I believe if we know more about each other, we can help each other out, and that's how we progress. Do you think that's where the biggest... Organizers wanted this to be a safe, peaceful demonstration. They even stressed that if you see protesters get in line, remind them of why we're here and who we're standing for. Well, there were peaceful protests today in other suburbs, too. In Noblesville, hundreds gathered at Federal Hill Commons carrying signs reading Black Lives Matter and say their names in reference to so many black men and women who have died at the hands of police officers. Organizers say they want to put an end to racial violence in America. Reverend Mindy Mays with the Bethel AME Church in Noblesville spoke to the crowd saying she fears as a black woman that she may one day get a call that one of her brothers, her nephews, or her cousins, or her godson even will have some encounter with police that didn't end well. But she said that she has hope for change. And in Brownsburg, a small gathering, but with a powerful message. And as you can see, protesters gathered with signs. One said, stop killing black people. Another, I can't breathe. Rest in peace, George Floyd. And another that read, stop police brutality. There were uniformed officers on scene, including one who hugged one of the protesters. Of course, a peaceful day of demonstrations, but as is the case here in Indy, protesters say that they want this dialogue to turn into action and into policy change. I'm live downtown working for you, Mark Mullins, RTV6. Mark, thank you. And for the 10th consecutive day, protests continued here in Indianapolis. This was the scene downtown late this evening. A group not quite as large as in previous days marched through the streets. The protest was peaceful and ended after a couple of hours.
And instead of marching downtown, protesters with Indy 10 Black Lives Matter decorated their cars and drove to the area of East 82nd and North Pennsylvania streets. They called it the Wake Up for Black Lives vehicle procession. Around 6 o'clock this morning, they honked their horns and chanted, no justice, no sleep, outside of what protesters say was Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett's home. Indy 10 Black Lives Matter says they have a list of demands they want Mayor Hogsett to meet, including releasing the names of the officers involved in the Dre John Reed case. There is no curfew in Marion County at this hour, and there are no plans to have one again in response to protests. Mayor Hogs had made that announcement this morning on Twitter. His tweet also praised those who took part in yesterday's downtown protest, calling the turnout record-breaking and thanked law enforcement for keeping the crowd safe. New at 11, people of faith from the Butler, Tarkington, and Meridian Kessler neighborhoods walked the streets of their community as a way to come together and acknowledge their role in what they call an unjust system. Leaders say they are devastated by the disregard for black lives seen most recently after the loss of George Floyd and Dre John Reed. They say they feel called to put their feelings into words and their words into action. More than 500 people took part tonight from different churches in the area. They are coming together to lift up lift up the lives that have been lost and take the first step towards doing work to rebuild their churches and individual lives. Aside from protesting, many people are speaking out and expressing themselves through art in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. RTV6's Stephanie Wade was downtown today talking with local artists as they shared their message. <laughs> Walking up and down this avenue, starting with just boards, you saw more of the heartache, more of the pain that this country has been through. But as we, as we fill it with art, you start to see the love, the energy, the life that we hope to bring back. You can't get far walking along downtown's popular Massachusetts Avenue without seeing some painting, some mural, some words supporting Black Lives Matter. Whether it's music, words, painting, I choose to use every platform I can to make a difference. Fueled by a number of emotions, Gentry Parker and Elijah Norwood designed and are painting this mural in front of the Grand Union tattoo in honor of George Floyd, both remembering his death and exalting his name. To be 100% honest, anger, um, I was hurt. And then as an artist, you kind of ask yourself what message you want to put out. A new beginning a new era, a new age. I think we've been focused on the old way of living for far too long. A lot of those ideals and those beliefs, they no longer apply to today's world. An interactive piece, they're painting the change they hope to see in the world with a bright yellow sunflower above a silhouette where people can stand in their shoes for even a moment, take a picture and take the pledge to end racism and police brutality. I want for our skin to not be weaponized, right? Just because of the pigment and the melanin in our skin. Uh, I want to not be feared just because of who I am. Sadly, my grandparents had to protest, my mother had to protest, and here I am today. And uh, I hope to paint a world or create a world in which my children won't have to do the same. It's beautiful. It's a sign of peace. It's something that uh, this community badly needs. No justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. The movement here in Indianapolis and across the country giving these artists hope. We're happy to be black. We just are. And, uh, you know, for once, at least in my life, I got a snapshot of, you know, I don't have to feel like uh, anyone's looking at me a certain way because of the color of my skin, right? Judging me in a negative way. So uh, when the protest came through, I mean, it was everything. It was empowering. We walked through downtown and saw it all. And I think that was important because it made it real. And you saw places destroyed that you'd been in before. Uh, but now what you're seeing is those very same business owners are saying, that's okay, what we're going to do is work for peace. We're not going to work for anything else besides that. A community coming together, knowing art won't solve everything, but it's a start. As an individual, you are already powerful beyond measure. But united, there's nothing we can't accomplish. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. 
Stephanie, thank you. And tonight, local businesses that have been forced to close or have been impacted by vandalism from last week's protests are getting some major financial help from a local church. I-Town church members not only came downtown this weekend to help clean up graffiti and pass out food, but they also gave three local businesses a $10,000 check. These are businesses that have been have broken windows and other dam damage from the violent protests last weekend. The checks went to Michael's Soul Kitchen, the, the DR Barber Salon and J Benzel Menswear. They also gave a $10,000 check to the group City Life East, who also spent the week cleaning up downtown. We've got a check for you to support what y'all are doing for $10,000 because we love what y'all are doing and the difference you're making with youth. And we want to be behind you and want you to know that we love you, but we're not just saying it, we're showing it because we want to make a real difference. Come on. Thank you, man. I love you, brother. Love you too, bro. Wow. Not just a one-time camera thing. Wow. Let's make a difference together. Yes, sir. All of the money came from the church's excess fund. There are five I-Town Church locations in Indiana. They hope it helps these groups with the rebuilding process. Now to your Storm Team 6 forecast. Meteorologist Kyle Mount standing by. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, we are wrapping up a great weather weekend here across central Indiana. Very nice for the first weekend of June. And temperatures tonight still in the 60s and 70s. As you head out the door in the morning, you will be greeted with some sunshine. That sun comes up at 617. We'll have temperatures in the lower 60s, already close to 70 by 9 a.m. It's this area of high pressure that's been bringing in very comfortable air for us. But our attention goes down to the Gulf Coast, where a tropical system is making landfall tonight. That will have an impact on our weather coming up. I'll have more details on that in a few minutes. Kyle, thank you. More protests around the world and new calls for an end to local police departments. Could this really happen? The latest coming up next. Visit regions.com slash tools. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Tonight, fellow letter carriers are continuing to support the daughter of Angela Summers. Summers is the postal employee who was killed in April in Indianapolis. The Angela Summer Memorial Ride started this morning at 8 Second Saloon on the west side. Organizers with the National Association of Letter Carriers say 575 bikes and cars took part. They raised a total of $23,000. The money will go towards establishing a trust fund for Angela's daughter. As protests continue across the country and the world, there is a new cry to defund police departments in cities across America. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has the latest. Tonight, across the country, emotions running high. Nearly two weeks after George Floyd died in Minneapolis, the fallout continues. In St. Louis, this ring security camera showing an officer hitting an unarmed black man with an unmarked patrol car. One officer suspended and two others placed on leave. The police department and the FBI are investigating. No! In this video overnight showing a violent takedown of a black man caught on police body camera. That officer now charged with assault. The white officer firing his stun gun at the man as he walked away. The officer then using the stun gun again while pinning the man to the ground. We hold ourselves to a much higher standard than what we see in this video. We have an obligation to meet those standards, and I have an obligation to make sure that justice is served. And now, a growing outcry to cut police funding. In Minneapolis, the city where George Floyd died, the city's mayor showing up to offer support to protesters, but then getting booed after saying he's against abolishing the police force. In New York City, Mayor Bill de Blasio announcing a new wave of reforms, including taking funds from police. I want to make a statement of principle right Right now that we will be moving funding from the NYPD to youth initiatives and social services. This as the NYPD searches for the suspects wanted for torching and destroying a police van during protests in Brooklyn. Tonight, the NYPD sergeant who was struck by a car so hard he flew in the air during a protest earlier this week in the Bronx, released from the hospital. On Monday, former police officer Derek Chauvin will make his first court appearance. Chauvin is the former officer who held George Foley down with his knee. He faces second degree murder and second degree aggravated assault charges. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego.
Joe Biden plans to travel to Houston tomorrow to meet privately with the family of George Floyd. The former vice president will also record a video message for Floyd's funeral service on Tuesday. Biden does not plan to attend the service to avoid disruptions that could be caused by his Secret Service detail. The Centers for Disease Control says it's closely monitoring the nationwide protests sparked by Floyd's death. There are concerns that the demonstrations, like other large gatherings, could lead to COVID-19 outbreaks. The CDC is also concerned about the use of tear gas and similar chemical agents on protesters because they cause people to cough, which can increase transmission of the virus. We showed you yesterday local health officials offered free COVID-19 testing near the state house in hopes that protesters would take part. Now to the latest on the toll the pandemic is taking on Hoosier lives. According to the State Department of Health, 2,121 people in Indiana have died from COVID-19. 11 of the newly reported deaths happened between May 18th and yesterday. More than 304,000 people have tested positive, have been tested. Just over 12% have tested positive. Churches around the state, especially in Marion County, are still taking their first steps in reopening to in-person services. At St. Christopher Catholic Church in Speedway, this was the first weekend that parishioners were allowed to be in church to attend Mass. The parish has been offering online services since the pandemic began and will continue to do so. The Archbishop has suspended the requirement to attend Sunday Mass through August 15th. About 50 people were at the 1030 Mass wearing masks and social distancing. Caution tape blocked off every other pew in the middle sections. Hand sanitizer was readily available. Pre-coronavirus, about 375 to 450 people attended 1030 Mass on Sundays. St. Christopher will begin in-person daily Mass tomorrow. Kyle. A great weekend to spend some time outdoors. Hopefully you're not having to nurse a sunburn after all that sunshine that we enjoyed. Temperatures made their way into the middle 80s today. We're sitting at 75 right now and still that humidity that's really been the game changer the last couple of days it is very low at just 43 percent and as we go into the overnight and early tomorrow morning temperatures settling back into the lower 60s and our skies they're going to stay nice and clear in fact as we looked your monday forecast kind of seems like a game show here survey says sunshine we will enjoy bright sunny skies throughout the day and that will allow those temperatures to warm pretty quickly here we'll get around 80 degrees at noon and eventually well into the 80s, close to 90 degrees in many spots throughout our Monday. 89 in Muncie and Indianapolis, as well as Bloomington, right around 90 degrees in Columbus. Tomorrow, the humidity stays low, then everything changes as we get into Tuesday. That's when we're going to see that humidity return. It's going to turn breezy. We'll also have the chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms, so it is not going to look like the last couple of days here. There are those steady winds, too, that will be between 20 and 25 miles per hour as we get into the the afternoon with temperatures still making their way into the middle and upper 80s and all those changes courtesy of Cristobal which has been making landfall in Louisiana tonight that will then quickly move through portions of Missouri and Illinois at least the central portion of that storm but it is pretty far reaching by hundreds of miles so we are going to feel those effects here in central Indiana that will come again with more in the way of some rain chances and those winds that could gust 35 to 40 miles per hour Tuesday and Wednesday, and we could see a few strong to severe storms on Tuesday. There is a marginal risk across central Indiana that we could see an isolated tornado that typically comes with those tropical systems. So here's a look at TrueCast. We pick things up at noon on Tuesday, cloudy skies, but then as we kind of get into the heating of the afternoon, those showers and storms starting to bubble up, you can see waves of those that will be moving through, and I think they'll move through enough. We're not going to have to deal with too much in the way of heavy rainfall, and then we'll see a few more of those showers hours into the Wednesday forecast. Seven day planning forecast as we put it all together, the humid and very toasty temperatures that we're going to have here going through Tuesday will then kind of go by the wayside as that weather system moves away. We'll dry things out and high temperatures in the upper 70s to around 80 degrees through next weekend. I'm Dave First. His story touched race fans everywhere. And now John Andretti's legacy is being told in a whole new way. How you can read all about it. Coming up in the Sports Extra Spotlight. RF.org. 
As racing returns around the United States, one author is taking a moment to look back. John Andretti lost his battle with cancer last January, but his legacy is on display in a brand new way. How you can read all about it. Sports director Dave First with the Sports Extra Spotlight. You've been a great to us. Cynthia. It was a life and career made for TV. John Andretti was on it a lot. And now his story comes in a whole new way. I was talking with a friend and, and we got to talking about John and, and the idea just kind of popped up. Wow, it would be great to, to do a book with John. Absolutely. And writer Jade Gerst doing just that, entitled Racer, capturing the many aspects to John's career. I don't know that the current generation really understands uh, the diversity that John had when it came to racing a car. The book is great about um, showing that diversity and, and him actually detailing kind of some of the differences between all of those. Including his most successful time in NASCAR and a win for Richard Petty in 1999. He talks about that with great reverence. Like I think at, at that moment, he appreciated and under, understood what it meant for Richard and his team who hadn't seen Victory Lane in a lot of years. Ultimately, the book touches on his 2017 colon cancer diagnosis and the still ongoing Check It for Andretti campaign. His goal coming out of the initial diagnosis was, I want to help other people to make sure they uh, are not in my shoes. The single thread through the book is family, friends, and helping others. That, that's always a thread underneath even the, the funniest racing stories. And that includes the 23 years of his race for Riley, the annual karting event which raised nearly $5 million. John opening up in a series of interviews about the good times and the bad. There were days when I got there that he clearly did not feel good, did not have much energy. Mm -hmm. But after a question or two, or I would, if I would hit on something, you, you could see his face light up. Personally, selfishly for me, that was a, a great feeling, knowing that he, he so enjoyed sharing a lot of the stories. Pre-orders are available at OctanePress.com with 10% of the proceeds going back to Riley Children's Hospital. He's still giving back the way John would want it. Day first, RTV6 Sports. Some of our neighbors who are most vulnerable to COVID-19 have extra clothes, supplies, and necessities tonight. Today, several health and advocacy groups hosted an event outside of Wheeler Mission in downtown Indianapolis to support men, women, and families experiencing homelessness. They were given free personal hygiene kits, face coverings, books, and more. Organizers say people without stable housing face extra challenges when it comes to protecting themselves from the virus. They're just on the forefront. Uh, a lot of times some of them may be uh, sleeping on the outdoors and very difficult with our places of business being closed, having the ability to access resources. For many of our homeless neighbors, health care is a barrier. Many of our homeless neighbors do not have clear, easy access to health care. And so my message is very simple. At Eskenazi Health and the Marion County Health Public Health Department, we are honored to care for our homeless neighbors. The president and CEO of Health and Hospital Corporation says Eskenazi community centers across Indianapolis provide free health care services to people in need. Kyle. Enjoy that sunshine Monday. We'll have high temperatures around 90 degrees because then the shower and thunderstorm chances will be with us Tuesday, Wednesday, as those winds occasionally will gust between 35 and 40 miles per hour. Looking a little better, though, there for the end of the weekend and next weekend. Sunshine returns and highs near 80. All right, Kyle, thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Indiana starts at 430. Have a great night.